unlock hidden treasures waiting to be discovered in your life. We're handing you the biblical keys right now on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burnus. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, where we help you to discover the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. I'm Jonathan Burnus. Thanks for joining us today. We've got a fascinating show for you. Have you ever seen the bumper sticker that says, Jesus is coming, look busy? Do you know when he's coming? Are you ready? Pastor Mark Biltz is with us today to reveal God's timetable, but first, a little background. Pastor Mark Biltz burst into the public eye with revolutionary teachings about the biblical blood moons. His groundbreaking research and innovative theories have earned him guest appearances on both radio and television worldwide. Biltz feels an urgent call to reveal what the Hebrew prophets said concerning end times and has written God's Daytimer to help Christians get on God's timetable now. Mark, good to have you back, my friend. Thank you. Well, it's been, it's been a while. Yes. Well, we've completely redone the set. I you didn't know it. you were going to be at the Whaling Wall tonight, I right? I love the Western it. Wall. It's great. Yeah, it's a big change. Well, it, it's, it's so good to see you again, and I'm so excited about your new book, God's Daytimer. You talk about God's timetable. Sure. What does that mean? Well, I ask a lot of people if they believe in divine appointments. And they all say, yes. And then I tell them, well, guess what? They're scheduled. You know, there's actually divine appointments when we can meet with God, but it's going to be on His time schedule, not ours. Too often we want to make God meet with us at, on our schedule rather than realizing we need to meet with Him on His. For example, in uh, Genesis 114, God created the sun and the moon, the lights, and it says He created them for four particular reasons. It wasn't light and heat. That's not what the first one's mentioned. Uh, the first one is science. And then it says for seasons. But the problem is the English language. Uh, when we think of seasons, we think of fall. But the Hebrew word is moed, and it means a divine appointment. And then when it says days and years. I, I don't, I don't want to yeah. miss that. We talk about the feasts of the Lord. We talk about the festivals right. of Israel. But in, a, in effect, they're modim, they're appointed times of the Lord. And that brings out so much more meaning. Well, this is why you want to really understand the Jewish roots of the Bible, because the same word they translate as seasons in Genesis, they translate it as feast in Leviticus 23. So does Moed mean fall or food? They're both wrong. <laughs> you know, this is why you need to understand their divine appointments. Mark, what did the, what did the ancient uh, Hebrews, the ancient uh, Jewish community know about God's calendar that Christians need to know, because this is part of your life message. Oh, it sure is. One of the things is when we realize that not only were they divine appointments, they were called holy convocations. Now, convocation means an assembly, like you could have a high school convocation. But the Hebrew word mikra implies more than an assembly. It implies a dress rehearsal. And so what they would be doing every year, they would be going through the prophetic dress rehearsal of what was going to happen 1,500 years later. Remember in Revelation, it says Yeshua was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That means God had it all planned out. It's not like Jesus died and the Father goes, oh no, we got to go to plan B and resurrect him. Okay. <laughs> he knew he was going to die. But can you imagine how horrible it would be to experience the death of one of your children? I mean, may it never happen to anyone. But the father says this, look, I am pre-planning my son's funeral. I'm going to determine what day he's going to die. I'm going to determine what time he's going to die. As a matter of fact, he says, I'm going to determine what songs are going to be sung at my son's funeral. He had David write the Psalms that would be sung on that fateful day, the very words. And so at nine in the morning, when Yeshua was being bound to the cross, that same moment, they're binding the Passover lamb to the altar. Josephus records two million Jews were in Jerusalem for Passover. So there's a two million member choir. Mm. And what is Yeshua hearing all of them sing? At that very moment, they're binding him to the cross. Psalms 118 is the Hallel. Wow. That's what they're the singing. The great Hallel. And at the end, what are they singing? Bind the sacrifice with cords, even to the horns of the altar. I, want, I don't want people to miss that Psalm 118 
which is so messianic. Huge. Uh, the, the, which, which is a prophecy, includes a prophecy, the stone that the builders rejected has yes. become the chief cornerstone. What's so powerful about that, uh, if your audience may remember, that it says they sang a hymn at the Last Supper, went over to the Mount of Olives. I know the words to the song they sang. And everyone can't believe it. And I say, it's Psalms 118. Beautiful. We got to take a break. When I come back, I want to talk about blessing. We okay. all want to be blessed. And when you connect yourself to the appointed times of God, you receive blessing. What kind of blessing? I'll talk more with Pastor Mark Bilt straight ahead. The way you make the Jews jealous is things that they have discarded or things they don't have interest in. All of a sudden, you pick those lost treasures up these golden nuggets, and you begin to celebrate them. They're wondering, how come you're so happy? Why are you doing this? Would you like to have a divine appointment with God? Are you ready to go on a thrilling adventure through the Bible? Do you want to hear God's voice like never before? Then you need God's Daytimer by Pastor Mark Biltz. God's Daytimer teaches important biblical principles you need to understand the Jewish roots of your faith and grow with God. This book and DVD is gonna help you to understand the timetable that God has for you. The Hebrew scriptures are full of passages that can change your life, and this book will show you how. Learn how to honor the Sabbath God's way and be blessed. Get on God's calendar and bear more fruit. I wrote this book just to put you into a closer relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. God's Daytimer is the book you need for yourself, your family, and your friends who want life-changing biblical revelation. So don't wait, order God's Daytimer now. And when you do, we'll sow a special gift into your life, God's Daytimer DVD. This DVD is a perfect companion to the book and explains how celebrating the biblical feasts honors God and will help you bring the feasts to life with this set of Celebrate the Feasts tent cards. Each card contains an easy to follow recipe, key scriptures, and Hebrew blessings translated into English so you can enjoy all seven major feasts with family and friends. We will send you all three of these important resources for your donation of $40 or more. So call now. When you do, you'll be taking an important step toward improving your life and helping our ministry improve the lives of Jewish people worldwide with crucial medical, dental, and eye care. Most importantly, you are helping Jewish communities from Argentina to the Ukraine to Africa hear the gospel and learn that their Messiah, Jesus, has come. Remember, God said He will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Your gift of any amount will bless the Jewish people. But when you donate $40 or more, you will bless the Jewish people and you'll get these three important resources. Call the number on your screen now to partner with Jewish Voice Ministries. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. To receive your gifts, please specify offer 1382 when giving $40 or more. Don't wait. Call, click, or write today. Welcome back. My guest is Pastor Mark Belts. He's the author of a new book. It's called God's Daytimer. And it's also a DVD. You've yes. done both a, a book and a DVD. What is, what is God's Daytimer? Well, God's Daytimer is his appointment book. And he has scheduled appointments. Wait, where he wait, wants wait. You mean we can get God's appointment book into our hands? Can you believe it? Sold. Uh, uh, that's why I even have a lock and a key on that day timer because I'm going to give people the keys to how to unlock God's day timer so they can get into his appointment book. And can no you imagine that? Getting, getting God's calendar, his day timer, and knowing where he's going to be, when he's going to be. I love it. It's so incredible. I tell people, do you want to be at the wedding of the Messiah? And they go, yes. And I said, then why wouldn't you want to be at the dress rehearsal? Because each one of these divine appointments are dress rehearsals for prophetically what's going to be coming. I, I want to show a verse here. 
that I think applies to this, and it's Romans 11.25. I love it. Which says that a blindness has happened in part, meaning that some Jewish people like myself and thousands of others believe that know that Jesus is the Messiah. We've had our eyes open, but there's a blindness that's happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. I don't believe that's the full number. I believe it's fullness. Well, what that implies is maturity. He's waiting for the maturity of the church to grow up. And this is part of it, though. Uh, exactly. The restoration of the Jewish roots of our faith is part of that maturity. But the amazing thing about Romans 11, it says because of their unbelief, the non-Jews have been shown mercy. But then the next line says, but guess what? They'll believe when you show them mercy. But we haven't shown them mercy for 2,000 years. And they wonder why they don't believe. Uh, it, we uh, haven't given them anything to identify with. Uh, well, my goodness, do you remember Joseph? His brothers came to Egypt, they didn't recognize him. Why didn't they recognize him? He looked Egyptian. He had an Egyptian name. He was dressed as an Egyptian. Well, the church has been presenting an Egyptian Jesus for 2,000 years. There is a responsibility that every Christian bears, also in Romans 11, that their salvation then brings them into the responsibility of provoking the Jewish people to jealousy. I see this doing that. Huge, because the church has only been provoking them to anger. And they need to provoke them to jealousy. And the way to make them jealous, uh, I like to explain it this way. When I was a little kid, I was about in first grade, and I had this nice red tricycle, man, that I just wheeled all over the place. And of course, it got all beat up and old, and I threw it in the trash. Well, it so happens, the trash man lived like three doors down. And he took my tricycle out of the trash and he painted it and cleaned it all up and gave it to his son. And then I saw his son riding my tricycle. <laughs> uh, oh, I want it back, it's mine. And he said, no, you gave it away, it's mine. And he heads off with the tricycle. And I, I remember that because the way you make the Jews jealous is things that they have discarded or things they don't have interest in. All of a sudden you pick those lost treasures up these golden nuggets, and you begin to celebrate them. They're wondering, how come you're so happy? Why are you doing this? I want and it, it looks, back. And it looks nicer than anything they ever did. Exactly. You know, the Passover's more exuberant. It's more joyful. Oh, oh yeah. It has the full meaning of Messiah yes, and exactly. our salvation. Exactly. And that's the blessing that comes. I'm telling you, this is for a Jewish believer to see this kind of restoration is absolutely awesome because I know that it's connected yes. to the salvation of Israel. Yes. The eyes of the church are being opened. Yes. And the eyes of the Jewish people are being opened. God's Day Timer, it's a book, it's a DVD. We want to get these resources into your hands. Pastor Mark Biltz is going to be back in a moment to tell us why the book of Galatians contains some of the most misunderstood verses in the Bible. Would you like to have a divine appointment with God? Are you ready to go on a thrilling adventure through the Bible? Do you want to hear God's voice like never before? Then you need God's Daytimer by Pastor Mark Biltz. God's Daytimer teaches important biblical principles you need to understand the Jewish roots of your faith and grow with God. This book and DVD is going to help you to understand the timetable that God has for you. The Hebrew Scriptures are full of passages that can change your life, and this book will show you how. Learn how to honor the Sabbath God's way and be blessed. Get on God's calendar and bear more fruit. I wrote this book just to put you into a closer relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. God's Daytimer is the book you need for yourself, your family, and your friends who want life-changing biblical revelation. So don't wait. Order God's Daytimer now. And when you do, we'll sow a special gift into your life. God's Daytimer DVD. This DVD is a perfect companion to the book and explains how celebrating the biblical feasts honors God and will help you bring the feasts to life with this set of Celebrate the Feasts tent cards. Each card contains an easy to follow recipe, key scriptures, and Hebrew blessings translated into English so you can enjoy all seven major feasts with family and friends. We will send you all three of these important resources for your donation of $40 or more. So call now. When you do, you'll be taking an important step toward improving your life and helping our ministry improve the lives of Jewish people worldwide with crucial medical, dental, and eye care. 
Most importantly, you are helping Jewish communities from Argentina to the Ukraine to Africa hear the gospel and learn that their Messiah, Jesus, has come. Remember, God said He will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Your gift of any amount will bless the Jewish people. But when you donate $40 or more, you will bless the Jewish people and you'll get these three important resources. Call the number on your screen now to partner with Jewish Voice Ministries. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. To receive your gifts, please specify offer 1382 when giving $40 or more. Don't wait. Call, click, or write today. The Hebrew Scriptures reveal a time on God's calendar when He will regather the lost tribes of Israel and He'll bring them back to their land. But in the meantime, many Jewish people live in dire poverty in places like India, Ethiopia, and Zimbabwe. Your financial support of this ministry helps us bring hope and healing to suffering Jewish communities. We sent a video producer to one of our medical outreaches to show you the difference that your donations are making. When you partner with Jewish Voice Ministries, where does your money go? That's what I wanted you to see, so I set out to capture what goes on during our medical missions. My name is Mark Meissner. I'm a field producer. This is the story of someone extraordinary. Your donations blessed. His eyes are open, but he cannot see. 19-year-old Elias has been blind since he was two. I didn't notice him at first. He was one of dozens in a long line of patients who entered the clinic on day four. These people are not just numbers. Each one matters to Jewish voice. Something about him captured my attention. I felt like God was guiding me towards him prompting me to tell his story. At that moment, I had no idea what was gonna happen next. As I followed Elias to the eye clinic, I was hoping doctors could restore his vision. By now, Elias recognized my voice and it was able to comfort him as he waited to see the doctor. The first diagnosis confirmed Elias had cataracts in both eyes. Doctors were optimistic they could help him. My spirits soared. I was ecstatic that Elias would soon be able to see. Elias told me his family disowned him because he was blind. They believe he was punished by God, so they sent him away to live in an orphanage. Later that day, a second opinion brought disappointing news. An ultrasound revealed Elias had detached retinas. Doctors could not restore his sight. I was heartbroken. Tears were flowing. I had so much hope and confidence only to have it taken away in an instant. I asked Elias if he was sad. He said, no, Mark, I am happy. No way was I going to abandon Elias at this point. More than ever, I wanted him to know that God was with him and that God loved him. I took Elias to a tent where several prayer warriors took over. They shared the good news of Yeshua with him, and Elias accepted the Lord into his heart. I felt compelled to join in. That's me on the left praying for Elias to receive spiritual healing. By now, I was spent. The day had turned into an unexpected emotional roller coaster. We still had to take Elias home. I was dreading having to say goodbye to my new friend. As we dropped him off, I wondered why God put him in my life that day. I still don't have an answer for that. Elias remains blind, but he now has a new vision, a vision of Yeshua. I may never see Elias again, but he will always have a place in my heart and in my prayers. And I am so grateful Jewish Voice gave me the opportunity to see a life changed. Elias has come to know Jesus as his Messiah because of your financial support. When you partner with Jewish Voice, you not only help us to provide vital medical care, dental care, eye care, water purifiers, you help us to share the gospel with lost tribes around the world. We're making a difference, but there's so much more to be done. 
and we need your help and we need it now. When you donate to this ministry, you don't just get great products that can change your life, you help us change the lives of Jewish people worldwide. Join Jewish Voice Ministries as we tour the Holy Land and celebrate Israel 2017. It's time to honor the 50-year anniversaries of Jewish Voice and the liberation of Jerusalem. On this trip, you'll stay in five-star accommodations as we tour Mount Carmel, Nazareth, Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, Upper Room, and more. You'll see Jonathan Burnus commemorate the recapture of Jerusalem right where it happened. We'll also visit an Israeli military base and enjoy a Bedouin meal. You can renew your marriage vows on the Sea of Galilee and participate in an immersion ceremony at the Jordan River. As an added bonus, you can even visit Eilat, the Red Sea, and world-famous Petra. Act now before this once-in-a-lifetime event sells out. Call and speak with our events coordinator to learn more exciting details about Celebrate Israel 2017 or visit jvmi.org slash Israel. Pastor Mark Bilt is our guest today, and he'll be right back to tell us about some very misunderstood verses in the Bible after I answer a few questions from our viewers. It's time now for Ask the Rabbi. We get some very interesting questions from our viewers every week on topics ranging from Jewish customs to the last days. So now it's your turn to ask the rabbi. Our first question comes from Helen in Wheeling, West Virginia. Hi to everybody in West Virginia. And the question is, what's the difference between a Hebrew, an Israelite, and a Jew? This is a great question and I can give a long technical answer, but the simple answer is nothing. They're the same people, but they're uh, snapshots of a people at, a different, at different periods of time. So when Abraham was called, he became the father of the Hebrew nation. He was a, a Hebrew and his descendants. After the 12 tribes and the establishment of the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, in Egypt, they became known as the Israelites, and late, later on, when the kingdom divided the southern kingdom from Judah, became the Jews, and through history, the Jewish people. That's a very simple answer. Same people, different periods of time throughout their history. Next question comes from Jerry in Springfield, Missouri, who wants to know, is the Trinity Jewish? Well, Jerry, the answer is absolutely. We don't have a concept of a trinity, but if you look through the Torah, the prophets, the writings, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, you clearly see the revelation of Elohim, which is plural. God is plural, but he's a unity within a plurality. That's what Echad means. When we declare that God is one, he is truly one, but he reveals himself in the Father, in the Redeemer, or the arm of the Lord, the branch of the Lord, the Messiah, and then, of course, the Spirit of God. You can find all three in the Jewish scriptures, but as far as the Trinity, we Messianic Jews refer to God as a tri-unity. He's not three gods, it's one God, but manifest in Father, Son, or Messiah, and Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. You can submit your questions to us at jvmi.tv, and then follow the link. And who knows, we may pick your question for an upcoming program. Pastor Mark Biltz has been our guest today. And Mark, a final thought. There's verses in the book of Galatians that are probably the most misunderstood verses in the Bible. Yes. Talk about that. Very misunderstood. And the reason why is people don't know the context. For example, in Galatians, people say, we don't need to keep the feast because he's talking to these uh, foolish Galatians and he says, why do you observe days and months and years? But guess what? He's not talking about the feast there. When he talks about the feast, he uses different terms. 
in Colossians, he talks about, don't let anyone judge you when you observe the Sabbath, the new moon, the holy days. So who were the Galatians? This is why you have to know the context. Do you remember in Acts 14, when Paul and Barnabas were going through Turkey, okay, through Galatia, uh, all of a sudden they healed this one man and they thought that one was Mercury and the other was Jupiter and they began to worship Paul and Barnabas. And he said, you know, quit it. We're not gods. You know, you need to worship uh, the God who created all the stars and the moons and the planets that you're worshiping. Guess where that happened? In Galatia. The Galatians were the ones who worshiped the planets, Jupiter and Mercury, and worshiping the gods of astrology. And so what Paul is saying to the Galatians, why in the world are you returning back to these foolish calendar, going observing days and months and years when you have the biblical calendar? And then they also misinterpret Colossians, because in Colossians 2, when he's telling them, don't let anyone judge you in the Sabbath, the new moon, or the holy days, what he's saying is this, the Colossians were next door neighbors to the Galatians. <laughs> and he's saying, don't let these foolish Galatians judge you because you are keeping the Sabbath, the new moons, and the holy days. And so we have to realize, too many people take Galatians and Colossians and think they're both talking about the biblical calendar but they don't understand the context is to the Galatians. He say, get off this Beautiful. stupid calendar. Beautiful, and we're no longer under the law. Why? Because the law <clears throat> is now written in our hearts. God's Day Timer, it's a DVD, it's a book. It, this is, these are resources we want to sow into your life as you help us uh, reach Jewish people. You sow into their life and it transforms their life when they hear the gospel. Next week, we've got a fascinating show for you. Here's a sneak preview. And what it said was, you don't have a prayer. And I, I nearly collapsed. But if Satan makes house calls, so does the Holy Spirit. We're out of time, but before I go, I wanna pray a special Hebrew blessing over your life. This is the ironic benediction. This is God speaking to you his blessing, his life. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yish marecha, ya'er Adonai panave lecha v'chunecha, yisa Adonai panave lecha v'sem lecha shalom. May you be blessed with his peace in the name of Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. And remember, if you have a prayer need, we're here for you. You can log on to our website, jvmi.com. TV. God loves you, and so do we. I want to thank our guest, Mark Biltz, and remind you that Psalm 122.6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. So pray for the peace of Jerusalem this week, which reminds me we're going to Jerusalem next May, and we're going to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the restoration of Jerusalem. We're going to be right at the Western Wall with tens of of thousands of Israelis to celebrate. You don't want to miss this moment. It's a prophetic moment in Jerusalem. I hope you can join me and my family. Until next week, I'm Jonathan Bernis saying shalom and God bless you. Thanks for watching. To stay up to date with all of our latest content, click on the subscribe button below.